Hello, and welcome to the Blender Basics video series. These videos are designed to accompany the chapters found in the Blender Basics tutorial book and not as a replacement. So if you don't have the book, head over to www.cdschools.org slash Blender Basics to download a free copy. This video will focus on Chapter 6, Setting Up a World in the Classic Blender Render Engine. So we'll do one separate for cycles. Um, Right now, when you, uh, I have an initial scene set up here where I have a plane to represent the ground, a cube, and the camera set up. So when I hit F12 and get a picture out of this, I basically just have a very gray world. So let's try to work on our world right now. So the world buttons are right here in the properties panel. And when you start out, Blender did give you a basic world to start out with. You could delete that and add another one, but we might as well stick with this one that we have. If you go down through here, you see there's a couple of buttons here. Paper Sky, Blend Sky, Real Sky. They're, uh, they're things to make the images look um, flattened out so things work out a little bit better. What we want to look at right now is the Horizon Color, Zenith Color, and Ambient Color. Um, I rarely ever mess with ambient color. This would be how Blender would um, simulate reflected light, lighting up areas of a room where there is no direct light hitting it. Now, if you are using Cycle, there's no need for ambient light. Um, but a lot of times when you start messing with ambient light, it will start to wash out your image. So I usually don't mess with it much if I can avoid it. Horizon color and zenith color are the ones that we want. And if I wanted a horizon color of, say, some nice blue, and a zenith of kind of more of a white color. Uh, you'll notice I'm not getting it blended in here because I need to hit blend sky to blend those two images together. And now when I hit F12, you'll have a more vibrant background. It's going to represent the gradient going from one to the other. So what else can we do in here? Uh, you'll notice that we have some panels for uh, environmental lighting and indirect lighting. We'll look at those at some point in a later chapter. Uh, there is a mist button at the bottom. Blender used to also have a built-in panel for stars which were really, really nice. They were a three-dimensional star field that if you moved a camera through them, it would look like you're in a space movie and the, st and the stars are flying by you. Um, for some reason, when they introduced cycles, they decided to rip that out of Blender, which was kind of a sad day when they did that. It was an easy way for students to simulate a star field if you didn't want something too realistic. So, but Mist is a neat thing with Blender. Bl Mist is going to actually take on your horizon colors in here. So, um, basically, Mist is a fog. If I turn that on and I have a minimum um, fog effect of zero, depth of 25, um, if I start taking that minimum um, somewhere between zero and one, we'll keep it at zero right now. We have a start distance. This would be how many Blender units away from the camera the fog starts. I usually figure if I'm standing in a mist, I'm standing in a mist, so it's at zero. Height would be one of those cheesy special effects you'd see in an old-fashioned horror movie where uh, the fog is like real close to the ground and about two feet up, there is no fog. Um, it's a neat effect that you could play around with. So start is zero, depth of 25. Let me just hit F12 and see what we get out of this. And you're starting to see a little bit of a foggy effect to the background. If I took the depth down to let's say about, um, oh, we'll say 18, F12 it again. You'll notice that the fog is moving in a little bit thicker, a little bit more dense. If depth is down to zero, um, well, then it's kind of like that old expression. You know, this fog is as thick as pea soup. You can't see through it. So, fog's a nice little feature that you can play around with. I'm going to take that back up to about 18 again, because we're going to use this with something else a little later on. If I render that out again, there's my fog of 18. Okay, I'm going to turn mist off for the time being. Now let's say I wanted to have some type of a cloudy effect. Right now we've got blue to white, you know, as a, as a transition area, but if I move over to the texture panel, you'll notice, notice because I don't really, I'm not dealing with a selected object. If I go straight from the world to the textures and make sure it says world right here, I could add a texture to this. Let's try adding a cloud effect to it. So if I go in here, there are clouds. So texture, world, both. Let's hit the both button and see what we get. Well, that kind of looks interesting. I get a little bit of a puffy effect there. And you can kind of see that on the on the display a little bit. So what else could I do to make this look a little more interesting? There's a hard effect where it's a puffier cloud. Okay, maybe that's something more that you would like to see. Um, I'm starting to see a little bit more in there. How about if I try to stretch these clouds out a little bit? So if I go with the size X, Y, and Z, you'll see that I can kind of stretch clouds out be careful not to go into a negative number. Let's go to point two with that. Let's crunch the Y up a little bit so they're kind of 
more drawn out okay and you're starting to see more of a cloud effect now what I may want to do is flip my horizon and zenith colors so let's try to make horizon be a white and let's make the zenith be the blue and hit F12 and see what I get out of that so you're getting kind of a reversal effect with things now so I've got more of a drawn out cloud kind of a neat effect what would happen if I turn on the mist right now now what you're going to have is kind of a puffy mist effect so combining the mist with the clouds is kind of a neat way to go but let's say I don't want to use either of those let's say I want an image background which a lot of people usually do okay so if I want an image background I'll go back to textures and I'm going to change this from clouds to an image or movie and let's open up an, a, an image so let's see if I go here to my um, my recent panel I'm going to go in here to just into my textures library and I have a folder here for um, panoramic backgrounds they would be really cool to look at but I'm going to actually just pick a generic picture right now so let's see this looks interesting let's try that one okay now I have a picture in here but if you notice both it's not quite right if I look at it the pictures there but it's getting blended in with the sky background and one thing else I could do to this is that I, I need to basically make a couple of settings so that this picture influences it. So usually what I do is I just check all, all four boxes down here under influence. Horizon, zenith up, zenith down. So a lot of times that's going to fix the picture to be more like what I want, but it's still stretched out. So we'll go back to the world settings and I'm going to choose paper sky. And I also need to go back and I have to change the sizing all back to one because it's still remembering what I did with the clouds. And now let's hit F12. And now there are the clouds of the picture. You can't see the rest of it because of the angle of the plane, but it's all there. Okay, so you can put a background picture in pretty easily that way. So those are the main features of working with a world setting in the Blender classic render engine and these are some of the settings that you're going to use when you actually go over and complete the exercise for your lighthouse scene so good luck and enjoy thank you for watching <music>